Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue my biology playlist, and we will talk about implantation and gastrulation. Implantation is when the freaking blastocyst gets implanted or attached or engraved inside the posterior superior aspect of the endometrium of the uterus, just close to the fundus. Gastrulation is the generation of distinct cell layers. And then you have the bilaminar embryo, epiblast, hypoblast, and the trilaminar embryo, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. With that said, now let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Today's video is video number 27. Please watch these videos in order, otherwise you will keep wandering around the field trying to find the fins. Last video was clavage and blastulation. What is clavage? You start with a zygote. And then mitosis. One cell will become two, the two will become four, four will become eight, eight will become etc. And then you have the morula. After that, you have the blastocyst, hashtag blastulation. Okay, so fertilization happens, sperm and ovum. Next, cleavage. The zygote will become an embryo. An embryo is anything greater than one cell. Zygote is just one cell. Okay. When you reach 12 to 16, we call you the morula. Then when you acquire a freaking cavity called the blastocele, we will call you the blastocyst or the blastula, which has an inner cell mass or embryoblast, which will become the actual embryo, and the outer cell mass or the trophoblast, which will become the freaking placenta. Next is implantation. Who's gonna get implanted? Not the morula, but the blastocyst will get implanted in the posterior superior aspect, just near the fundus of the endometrium of the uterus of mommy. Okay, after this, what's gonna happen? Well, you go to the bilaminar embryo stage. What are these two layers, bilaminar? Two layers, epiblast and hypoblast. Thank you. And then the trilaminar is the endoderm on the inside, ectoderm is on the outside, and mesoderm is in the middle. So we start with fertilization and then zygote, then morula, blastocyst, hashtag blastulation, and then implantation. After this, bilaminar, epiblast, hypoblast. Later, trilaminar, endoderm, mesoderm, and exoderm. Okay, let's talk about the implantation baby. Okay, question number one. What the flip is being implanted? The blastula, aka the blastocyst. This will be implanted. Where exactly? In the uterus, can you be more specific? The endometrium of the uterus, okay, like how many layers of the uterus has? The uterus has an inner layer known as the endometrium, and then an outer layer known as perimetrium, and a middle layer known as myometrium. It gets implanted into the inner layer, endometrium. Next, top or the bottom of the uterus? More towards the top, okay, more superior near the fundus, got it. More anterior or more posterior? Usually more posterior. So if you want to summarize in one word, implantation of the blastula at the posterior superior aspect of the endometrium of the uterus of mommy. After implantation, the endometrium will have a new name called decidua. What's the difference between decidua and endometrium? Nothing. It's, you know, like your professor cannot survive unless he complicates stuff. The decidua is just the endometrium after implantation. Nothing more, nothing less. This is the normal site of implantation, posterior superior aspect of the endometrium of the uterus. What if the implantation happened here in the fallopian O, oh, O, oh, or any other place? Well, this is abnormal and it's called ectopic pregnancy. Okay, got you. How does the blastula or the blastocyst gets implanted into the uterus using its outer cell mass known as the trophoblast? The trophoblast will become the chorion, and the chorion will give you the placenta. The placenta will dip its fingers, literally, into the endometrium of the uterus. How is mommy connected to her baby? Through the umbilical cord, which connects the placenta to the baby. And of course, the placenta is attached to mommy's uterine wall. What is the content of the umbilical cord? Basically, it's jelly. But don't say jelly to your professor because it's not so scientific. Call, call it gelatinous substance. What's in the freaking umbilical cord other than the gelatinous connective tissue substance? Oh, you have two arteries and one vein. But hey, Metacosis, I find it weird that you use the blue color for the artery and the red one to the vein. Because in this situation, the artery is carrying deoxygenated blood while the vein is carrying oxygenated blood, which is kind of weird. Adults versus embryos. In adults, whenever you have an artery, you can have one artery and one vein or one artery and two veins. Embryo, it's the other way around, two arteries and one vein. This never happens in adults. In adults, the artery carries oxygenated blood, 
blood in embryos, the artery carries deoxygenated blood. In adults, veins carry deoxygenated blood, but in embryos, veins carry oxygenated blood. Okay, however, what is common between the two? Artery, in either one, the word artery means it's a vessel that will take blood from the heart to a faceless organ, whatever the organ might be. A vein is the opposite, it takes blood from the organ to the heart. And this is true, whether you're talking about an artery, an adult or an embryo, or if you're talking about a vein of an adult or an embryo. This is the rule that does not change. Can you remind me of the blastocyst from last lecture? Sure, I have inner cell mass, aka embryoblast. And then I have outer cell mass, aka trophoblast. And then we have a cavity called the blastocyst cavity or the blastocele. Inner cell mass will give you the actual embryo. Outer cell mass will give you the placenta. That's right, embryoblast will give you the embryo itself. And this will give you the entire organism. You came from the embryoblast. Your placenta, which attached you to your mother, came from the chorion, which came from the trophoblast. Now, what the flip is gastrulation? Well, it's generation of distinct layers. What do you mean? Well, if you're talking about bilaminar, I'm talking about epiblast and hypoblast. But if you're talking about trilaminar, I mean endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. The word endo means inner, ecto means outer, and meso means in between. You see the blastocyst? Yeah, I see it. It will get protruded and penetrated and invaginated by something. And then the invagination will get worse. It will get deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you will have two cavities right like this. You remember the blastocyst? Yeah, it will remember as is. But this invagination will create a new cavity. Where is the new cavity? You see this? You see this small space here? Yep, this will be the second cavity. And we will call it the amniotic cavity that will be filled with the amniotic fluid. And when your lovely mother says to your lovely father, Hey Gregory, I guess my water has broke. Mommy is referring to the amniotic fluid. Okay, follow with me please. Here's the embryoblast, trophoblast, and blastocyst. Okay, right. This embryoblast will become the amnion. Okay, that's not a big stretch. The outer cell mass or the trophoblast will become the chorion. I'm with you till now. Amnion, chorion. To make matters worse, chorion will be divided into two things, and amnion will give you two things. Okay, let's start with the chorion. You have the syncytial trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast. Syncytial is the outer one. This is the one that gets attached to the endometrium of the uterus of mommy. How about the cytotrophoblast? This is more towards the baby. It's more to the, or towards the inside, and cyto means cell. Oh, it is lined by cells. I see it. How about syncytial? Well, what's a syncytia? A syncytia is like a network, a network of cells or a network of whatever, and the, like it has many individuals, but it makes one unit. Same thing here. It has many, many, many protrusions and invaginations, but they make one unit connected unit or network. That's why we call it syncytial trophoblast. Okay, so chorion gave me syncytial trophoblast and cytotrophoblast. I get it. How about the amnion? Well, it gave you the amnion and the yolk sac. Right. Who's gonna connect the amnion on the inside to the chorion on the outside? This is the mesoderm, which later will become, yep, you guessed it, the umbilical cord. Outer cell mass became the chorion, became the trophoblast, trophoblast became the syncytial trophoblast on the outside, cytotrophoblast on the inside, thank you so much, amnion became amnion and yolk sac, and then the amnion will have those cells, we call them amnion, and amniotic cavity filled with the amniotic fluid. My water broke. Who's gonna connect the amnion on the inside with the trophoblast on the outside? That's the mesoderm, aka the future umbilical cord, connecting the baby to mommy. And here is Gregory Jr. Inside the amnion. Okay, surrounded by amniotic cavity filled with amniotic fluid. Okay, which is basically Gregory Jr.'s urine plus other stuff. So when you were young, you were floating in your own freaking urine. So please be humble. Don't be an audacious piece of melana. No pun intended. And where's the yolk sac? It's here. It's getting smaller. Who's gonna connect the baby to the placenta or to mommy? The umbilical cord, which came from the mesoderma. I will tell you two minutes later that most of the connective tissue comes from the mesoderm. All of the blood and the blood vessels and the lymph, they came from mesoderm. What's in the umbilical cord again? Well, uh, I have two arteries and one vein. You mean vessels, right? Yep, vessels come from mesoderm. Duh. 
And then you have the beautiful Corion, Syncytial Trophoblast and Cytotrophoblast. The reality is way more complicated than this, but this is the basic picture. Let's review what do you mean by bilaminar embryo? Well, both layers came from the embryoblast, just to make sure that we are on the same page. Remember, we have inner and outer? Yeah, outer, who cares? It's the placenta. But inner, that's the actual embryo. Give me epiblast and hypoblast. Okay, who's gonna become the actual embryo? Epiblast. Okay, it's gonna give you the embryo and a primitive streak which is very important, as we'll discuss in the next video. Hypoblasts will contribute to the yolk sac, and the remainder, apoptosis, it will die. Epi means above, that's why it's on the top. Hypo means below, it's in the bottom. What do you mean by trilaminar embryo? Endoderm on the inside, ectoderm on the outside, meso in between. Who induced these three layers to develop like this beautifully? Um, the primitive streak, which came from epiblast. What does the endoderm do? Well, it gives rise to your digestive system, your respiratory system, and your heart. How about the mesoderm? Think connective tissue and everything else. So, bones and cartilages, okay. Muscles and tendons, thank you. Blood and lymph and blood vessels, okay. And two very important notes, dermis and adrenal cortex. Why are you emphasizing the dermis of the skin? Because the epidermis will come from the surface ectoderm, okay. Why do I care about the adrenal cortex? Because the adrenal medulla comes from the neural crest of the ectoderm. Uh-huh. Tell me more about the ectoderm. This is your epidermis and your entire nervous system. Whether you're talking about the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord and everything else, or you're talking about the peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and adrenal medulla. What are the cells that myelinate the central nervous system? Oligodendrocytes. That's why they have the same origin as the CNS. Okay. What are the cells that myelinate your peripheral nervous system? These are the Schwann cells. They share the same origin at the, as the peripheral nervous system neurons. And every neuron needs a co-neuron, like every pilot needs a co-pilot. The co-neuron is called neuroglial cells. Yep. Inside your central nervous system, there is a cavity containing cerebrospinal fluid. And to make cerebrospinal fluid, you need ependymal cells. They line the ventricles, they make the CSF inside the central nervous system, but there is no such thing as CSF in the peripheral nervous system, so ependymal cells are peculiar to the neural tube, because this is just central. Here is the ectoderm on the outside. Here is the endoderm on the inside. This will become your gut, your respiratory system, and your heart. And in between you have the mesoderm. The mesoderm is made of lateral plate mesoderms, these two circles right here. And in the middle you have the notochord. Do you remember the neural crest cells? Yeah, that gave rise to the peripheral nervous system. That's right. It gives rise to the peripheral nervous system, the adrenal medulla, all the ganglia, because actually, like, let me tell you something, the adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion, but please don't tell anybody. But it does not stop here. The neural crest will give rise to other things. You can remember them in the great mnemonic, California Motel ASS. As you see here, here's California, here's the motel, and here's the donkey. First letter, C, craniofacial structures. Thank you. Second letter is A, arachnoid matter and the pia matter around your brain and spinal cord. These are part of the meninges. We call them leptomeninges. Here is the arachnid, here is the pie. Arachnoid and pia. Third letter is M, melanocytes. And here are the melons of melanie. O is odontoblast. And here is the freaking dentist with a big O. T is for tracheal cartilage. And then E is for enterochromofin cells, which gives you the adrenal medulla. Here is chrome fin. Next, the L is for laryngeal cartilage. Thank you so much. How about A, all of your ganglia. And of course, your adrenal medulla is a modified ganglia. All of my ganglia. The ganglions. First S, Schwann cells. Here is the swan. And the last S is for the spiral septum or the aorticopulmonary septum in the heart. If you want more of these animated mnemonics, check out Picmonic. If you want to learn about antihyperlipidemics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal, antihypertensives, diuretics, and eudoxin, check out my cardiac pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And you can get a 30% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code SAVE30 at checkout, available for a limited time only. In the next video, we'll talk about neurulation, how your nervous system came to be.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Go to Picmonic for more than a thousand animated medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. I love you.